In this video, we will present the Sequence Manager and its functionalities. The Sequence Manager is always on top of the upper right edge of the design area and provides a graphical representation of the design's order and an easy way to change it at will. At this point, you can only see an icon that shows the whole design. And this is because Auto Function is enabled. When Auto Function is enabled, the program automatically decides about the sequence of all design objects according to its innate optimization strategy. So you practically leave all control over the sequence to the software, which uses its intelligent mechanisms to find the optimum sewing sequence. The objects that have different types, such as cut or paint, appear grouped only with their own type of objects and may be reordered as a group. For example, the yacht has two copies. One is paint and the other is cut work. You may reorder the paint object, the cut work object and the group of embroidery objects. You can only specify some optimization preferences to guide the software on how you want the design to be embroidered. This is explained in detail in a separate video. But what if you want to take control over the whole sequence yourself? You can simply disable the automatic optimization by pressing the Auto button on the standard toolbar and in place of the Auto button you now have one called Manual. So you switched into Manual mode and if you look now at the sequence window you can see the individual shapes of the design. Now you can click on any icon and drag it to any position you like to create your own sequence. Next to each sequence icon you can see a numeric value which represents the position of this design part in the embroidery sequence. The objects positioned higher in the sequence manager are those that will be embroidered first. If you click on any icon of the sequence manager it gets selected and you can spot it inside the design area with a highlighted rectangle around it. You can select multiple items using the control or command key and or the shift keys. To do so, hold the shift key press down, click on the first icon of the series and then on the last one. All the sequence icons between the ones you clicked are now selected. If you hold the control key press down and click on multiple sequence icons, they get selected too. Using the control key, you can also remove icons from a selection. If you hold the control key and click on already selected sequence icons, these icons are deselected. You can also use the control and shift keys in combination, that is, if you select a series of sequence icons using the shift key and then hold the control key pressed down, you can add other non-sequential icons to the selection or remove selected icons from the selection. If you right click on any sequence icon when one or more sequence icons are selected, then you also get general selection options. Using select all, you can select all sequence icons. Using select none, you can deselect everything. And using inverse selection, you can select all other icons except the ones already selected. For designs with too many design parts, it may not be easy to drag the sequence icons to the position you want them to be. In such case, an easy way to move one or more selected sequence icons is to scroll up or down to the direction where you want them to be. Right click on the sequence icon where you want them positioned and from the appearing menu choose Move Before and Move After to position the icons right before or after accordingly to where you right clicked. Additionally, if you select non-sequential icons and right click on any of the selected icons, you have the option that is called Join Together to bring these sequence icons one next to the other. The icons will then be moved next to the icon you right-clicked upon. 
On the right-click menu, there is also the option to reverse the order of two or more sequence icons. To do so, simply select two or more sequence icons, right-click on top of the selection and use the reverse option. When the sequence is set to manual, one more icon appears on the title bar of the sequence manager. When you see this icon, all the design parts are separate icons. If you click on this icon, then the design parts are grouped by color and the icon changes into this palette icon. This means that all the sequential objects and shapes with the same color are now grouped into one icon. This is a two-state button. So by default you see all objects are separate icons and if you press once the objects are grouped by color. If you click once again you switch back to separate icons. The group by color function does not group objects or shapes with the same color if they have different feel or outline types. For example, it will not group two rectangles which even though they have the same color one is filled with step fill type and the other with paint step fill type. When the sequence icons are grouped by color, then next to each icon you see a series of numeric values. Additionally, you can see the fill and outline colors that are used for each icon. The sequence manager can only be resized or minimized and cannot be closed. Notice that if you bring your mouse on the left edge of a sequence window, a double arrow appears and you can click and drag to make sequence icons smaller or larger. Click and drag to the right to make it smaller or to the left to enlarge it. If you shrink it too much, the sequence numbers and the colors are hidden. To minimize the sequence manager, you have to click on the pointing icon on the header and to maximize, you need to click again on the same icon, which will now point to the opposite direction.